All right, so here's how this works. Um, we had a uh, we had Stanley Malamed scheduled, okay. and uh, for some reason he didn't show. So it's it's totally cool. And then uh, <laughs> what I have is I've got uh, Tim Caruso who's going to show up, and he's he's kind of a resident expert on ergonomics. But I thought you and I could have a little fun, just do a little Q and A until then. What do you think? Whatever you want. This is my Eric. friend Marty. Marty does. Marty's kind of like the expert in uh, what did you say? Tech. Tech. And tech. Anything? Yeah, we kind of. You no know, jack of all trades, I guess. I you are. Know. Yeah. And you're a good guy. Thanks. Yeah, you know, so are you. <laughs> I love it. I love all it. Right. All right. So, so no, we're doing good here so, in Houston. So yeah, we are doing good <laughs> in Houston. So there's a microphone right over there. Does anybody have a burning question? I'll take it. Why take don't we do this? Whatever question you want. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Why don't we pass the microphone along? Tell us your name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then your burning question, if you have one. And guess what? Watch them all leave real quick. No, 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 no. We're, we'll say, hey, where are you going? And, and yell and, and scream them down. So anybody have a question? Uh, is The question can be on uh, any particular topic or? Yeah. Whatever you want. Political yeah. topic? Ask me anything. Is, what do they call it? AMA? AMA? Ask me anything. Political topic? Yeah. Okay, you go. All right, go ahead. Yeah, my name is Dr. Sun. I'm from Smile Rangers Dental KD. My question is... How can we get rid of these horrible reviews and uh, mm. ooh, dental patients or even Google uh, people like, you know, like uh, the, they're called like the Google um, partners. They just they're not even patients of record, but they just come and write you a three star review. So what do we do with that? So do you have an opinion? You go first. So, yeah, I do have an opinion on it. The standard line is bury them with good ones. Right. So, you know, that's really the thing. I mean, I'm lucky. We get really good reviews. Um, we've got a lot of them. You can use companies to get them. Um, there's a Facebook group, Lental Runs, which is yes. raving patients. You might want to get in that and see, you know, some of the stuff there. Um, with that, you, you have to remember that... We're all going to get bad reviews. I have got my office gets an occasional one star review. You okay, do? yeah, you know, <laughs> but most of them are not about treatment. Right. A lot of it's strictly about money, and you know what? People will dismiss some of that stuff, um, but some of them have legitimate complaints, and you know what? You need to address them, but you, unfortunately, you cannot address them in public. Yeah. Be very careful what you say. Um, there's HIPAA violations and things like that. So, you know, if you do have one, reach out to people who may be able to help you to craft a very nice response that will keep you within lines of HIPAA. And with that, you know, do the best you can because, let's face it, I mean, in my, my office, we've got four or 500 reviews. We're a 4.9, so we're not perfect, right? right? We've got one-star reviews, two-star reviews. You know, I, I think... Especially if you get a one-star review that says nothing, right? That's fine. I mean, it, it doesn't. Nobody's. It's dismissed. So with that, I think you know, bury them with good ones. Everybody's going to have a bad one. We've all been to a restaurant, right, and had a bad mm -hmm. meal or bad service. Doesn't mean I don't always go back. It's the consistency in that. Yeah. So you know, just do the best you can, but address real issues in real ways. But be careful doing so. Yeah, I would. I completely agree. I would check out Lens uh, programs. I'd also put a system in place for reviews. And at the end of the day, I mean, most of your reviews are going to be from people that our values don't match up. Right. I totally agree with what you say. It's going to come about, come down to experience. Nobody ever says, you know, I was looking at margins on this. <laughs> yeah. And it was way off. I think ultimately. What's going on, Tim? How are you? Can you have a seat. No, come in. He's coming in hot, so it's great. Um, we're talking about bad reviews, but like everybody's going to get them. Help that. There you go. There you go. So um, take it in a positive. Yeah, you got to take it right. I would also say this: you ever get a negative review? The fast. The best thing you can ever do is call the patient right away, like right. immediately, and and not be equipped with like an agenda. Just say, hey, listen, I just care, and I noticed. 
tell me. And then at the end, just say thank you. And a lot of times, that's just a good start, wouldn't you agree? It's a start. And sometimes you can negotiate them taking it down. Um, you know, I mean, again, it, it's, it's, if it's real, then you know what? you got to fix something. Yeah. That's really the important part. If it's a real, real problem, fix it. Right. Admit to the error. That's yeah. always the case. If it's, you know, the crazy person, well, you know, thank God you're not treating them anymore. Yeah. One other thing I say about crazy people that are crazy don't know they're crazy. So don't try to reason <laughs> with crazy people. Like just if they if if they've just have a, this long history of like being unhappy, you're not going to change that. Be so, polite. Be polite. Yeah. yeah very much so. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and don't necessarily take it personal. Yeah. You know, it may be directed at you, but don't take it that personal way. It makes it more difficult for you to deal with it on an, um, a non-emotional level. Yeah. So this is the fun transition part. So you and I have never met. No, we've not. Have you, do you know Marty? I don't, I've heard of Marty. Hello, Marty. Oh, Hello everybody. there. And my so, apologies for being late. No, you're not I, late. I, you're I early. I clock on the schedule. So. Okay, so you guys are in for a treat. This is Tim Caruso. You are an expert on ergonomics. Uh, some would say. Okay, pull tighter on oh, the mic. Oh, sorry. Okay, hello. <laughs> yeah, can you, you hear go. okay? Oh, yeah, I can hear him. He just needs you, to get right okay. in on the mic. Right in. Okay. There, there you go. go. Uh, there you go. How's that? So More better? Okay. This is going to be a fun uh, segment because uh, I had Stanley Melamed scheduled, and for whatever reason, he didn't make it, but we're going to get him back. But okay. Bob Skinner's like, we, you got to have well, Tim. So Bob but, and I are friends. Okay. Uh, so and, quit this in Stanley. We know he's not here, so <laughs> enough, you know? I love him, though. So... All right, you got to give us a little bio. Okay. Who, who are you? What do you do? Uh, so I'm a physical therapist. I've been a physical therapist for mm, a long time. Okay. Um, I started working with dentists. I had a private practice in Oak Park, Illinois, once upon a time, Frank, home of the Frank Lloyd Wright Home and Studio, nice. and uh, started having dentists come in, and I met a lady who was a hygienist who walked in looking like the Pope with her hands up in the air and both of her wrists bandaged. And I said, hello, good morning, I'm Tim. And she said, hi, I'm Mary. And I said, hi, Mary, what's up? And yeah. she said, um, I'm a dental hygienist and I've had my second uh, bilateral carpal tunnel surgery and I want to go back to work. And I'm like, mm, okay, let's have at this. And so I went to look in the literature at that time. It was the <clears throat> late 80s. And uh, there wasn't anything in the literature of scientific value. There was anecdotal, I like Crest, I like Aquafresh. So I went to my literature in physical therapy and orthopedics and surgery and work and all that. And we put together a program for her. And she worked very hard and I worked very hard and she went back to work part time. And as a result of that, I got invited to a study group dinner from all the hygienists in the western suburbs of Chicago at Charco's restaurant. And I had a steak dinner and got to talk about carpal tunnel for 30 minutes. And right. that's how this all started way back when. Uh, since then, I have uh, been invited to a number of meetings. Uh, I am on the Dental Wellness Advisory Committee of the ADA. And uh, my first round with them, they patted me on the back and said, thanks for coming. And I didn't hear from them for 10 years, but I'm back on the committee. So I'm a little bit of a charlatan because, yeah. you know, here I am. But um, they're listening. I think they're doing surveys now with uh, good questions about the maladies that the dental professionals are having. Yeah. And uh, I have been doing screenings with my partner, Dave, who's hanging out over there. He's a therapist too. And uh, we do posture screenings in the exhibit hall. We've done for ADA for a number of years um, and uh, have people fill out a symptom survey. And then we have them show us how we say it, uh, show us your best worst position. Yeah. And everyone has a really good best worst position yeah. uh, where they elevate their shoulders and they tip their head and they peek. And some of the maladies that come with that are back pain, neck pain, shoulder yeah. pain, tingling of their hands. And so we make recommendations based on the equipment, but we always start with their posture. Yeah. So we take some pre-pictures of their bad postures and they're like oh I didn't realize it was that bad and then we make some adjustments with equipment and the chairs and armrest etc and loops yeah and we uh, send them a souvenir copy and we make some recommendations for their them to try it and let us know how things are going so, I love it I love in it. a nutshell Dave, come up here have a seat <laughs> we're gonna put you in the hot seat okay right, th Dave. this is a big deal in dentistry is there yeah. anything like this out there? Like, I mean, I mean, everybody has their own what I call uh, issues. Right. All right. You know, none of us sit the way we're supposed to. I always say, you know, even for my patients, um, the thing I really want to in invent 
has already been invented, but no one will pay me for it, what? which is to sit up straight. Yeah. And so I always said to the patients, you know, you sit in front of your computer monitor and all you're doing is slouching. Yep. So I want a broom handle with two suction cups. You get the idea, <laughs> all right? And you can't come in. And that would solve a whole bunch of neck pain, TMJ pain, all of that stuff. Yeah. But you have to first get the patient to understand that posture matters. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. And until, it, 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 whether it's a patient or then the dentist, if you don't understand that your posture can be a problem, is contributing to your problem. Yeah. You're never going to accept the solution, just like everything else in dentistry. Totally. And, th well, and I think a lot of dental professionals don't realize, like, this is a sport. It's not like a profession. Like, it's a hard, a grueling. Your ability to stay healthy is going to determine. It's attrition. Yeah. Uh, yeah for sure. Yeah. And, you know, the one thing just observationally from a therapist, from my side of the fence and his side of the fence, yeah. he can talk about it too, but, uh, you know, what I've noticed that dental professionals will do anything on the planet to make sure that the patient is comfortable right. to their own detriment. Right. So they're doing gymnastics and cartwheels and they keep asking, are you okay, are you okay, are you okay? And the patient is only in the chair for one hour. And so if you would say, can you turn your head? Can you scooch over? Can you yeah. open your mouth bigger for a little bit longer? We'll be done sooner and you'll feel fine. But the dental professionals are there for 12 hours, That's sometimes so longer. True. And they're suffering that's cool. so true now don't get mad at this question but Go did ahead. you ever do four-handed dentistry like don't get mad yeah like, yeah like how, how long did you do that for you mean my four hands or no <laughs> without, without sitting in a chair you know oh, like, i mean you know the whole thing is is that it, it, i make the mistakes that, that he's talking about okay yeah. there are times that it is easier for me to move yeah, than it is yeah. to move the patient yes sir and you know if i can do that for a short period of time and i'm lucky Okay, I've been doing this a long time, and I got the gray hair to prove it. You look good, though. You, oh, thanks, you Kirk. You know, but I've got the hair you don't. But um, can you fix that? Yeah, can, wow. yeah, can we fix that? A wow. little PT, right? But you know, with that, you have to sit there and go, okay, what are my physical limitations? Yeah. All right. Um, I remember when I had hurt my back, and it had nothing to do with dentistry. Uh, that I couldn't do an extraction for a week. You know, I, I. I, I compensated it for it in different ways. And you have to understand that, but there's always what I call the cheat. You know what? It is easier for me to get the, to, to turn than the patient. Yeah. Oh, or sure. I'll stand up and do something because it's easier. Right. And as long as I can keep that small, that's great. But when it starts getting to be too much time and my back starts to hurt from it, then I have to be able to say to the patient, you're going to have to help me. Right, right. right. And Dave, we got to bring you in the conversation, okay? You, you've been listening. What are your thoughts? Bring us well, you know, I, I think one of the big things that we see is that patients will do all the exercises we give them, but posture, if you don't watch posture, it, it's the key to everything, Yeah. right? I mean, I'll have patients back to my clinic all the time saying, I do the exercises, but they don't help. But then you look at them and they sit slouched and they're not watching their posture enough and that's the feeding into it. Here's, yeah, here's right? an analogy for you guys for that. It's like flossing. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Exercise okay. is like flossing. Okay. And tell we both us why. have our tell cross us. to bear. I love it. Okay. I love so it. we tell our patients, you know, like Dave just said, you know, so hard. So, so I always say, like, well, what's the hardest exercise that you've been doing? And they go, um, um, um. <laughs> and they can't show you what the exercise is. Yeah. Which lead us to believe that they're not actually doing the exercise. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So same as like when I go and I'm bleeding to death on my bib in the dental office and they say, have you been flossing? And I say, um, um, um yeah, um, the last yeah. time was one you did it for <laughs> last time when I was ago. here at my last visit. <laughs> right. Yes. And I was bleeding similarly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Or they just lie to you. Well, yeah, well yeah. I mean, yeah. what I think that there's something that says there's 90 something percent of the, the households in the United States have floss in them. So everybody pretty much has it. Right. Using it is a completely <laughs> a different whole, thing. And, right. and what you're saying is true. I can do all the exercises, but I can't compensate right. for the fact that I may have an issue that I can't, I'm not addressing. And right. I, it, the part of that is I talked about some things with patients, and it goes back to the dentist too, is it's kind of like breathing. You can control it, but when you stop thinking about it, you then lose control over it. Right. So you need something to remind yourself all the time that you're right. slipping into something sure. that's not healthy. We For do sure. What we do is give people um, 
Avery makes little red sticky dots mm -hmm. that we used to put on the paper charts <coughs> yeah. back in the Stone Age. Yeah. What are those? Red sticky yeah. dots, right? Yeah. And we have people put the sticky dots around the operatory. And after we have a little session with someone and we show them the posture, we say, well, all right, we want you to get these sticky dots. And when you look around your operatory during the working day and you see the sticky dot, It'll remind you say, you. oh, those yeah. two crazy guys that talked about posture told us to look at the dot. We're going to sit up straight. That's because a Because then you idea. get your behavior modification and it starts to work. One other thing I'll just say about the exception, because I have a quote in one of the talks that I give, Dr. Belenke, and I can't remember where he worked out of, but the quote said, when the exception presents itself, so those are the people that you Correct. have to accommodate right. to, treat them exceptionally, but that's not what your daily routine should no. be. Right. So right. being mindful. That's, you know, a great, like, okay. that's a great quote. It's a great quote. Yeah, I, it is. I, you know, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. 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 Do you agree? Right. Yeah, yeah. Don't make it your daily routine. Right. Now, right. A lot of times we get in these conversations, we talk exclusively about the dentist, but the team members are important too. Correct. I mean, do you see a W w tell us what you what you learned about team members that may be the same or different for team members. I mean, everyone has their musculoskeletal right. complaints. I mean, we do a little survey, so I, I think the dentists, the male dentists have more lower back pain. The female dentists have more upper back and neck pain. And the hygienists and the assistants are their wrists and their hands, right. just kind of generically what we see. Um, the other thing that we see is, you know, when the when the new equipment is purchased, <clears throat> and no offense to the dentist to, to my right, <laughs> right. Uh, they get the new chair and the staff gets the old broken chairs or, yeah. uh, you know, they don't get a new one too. So sometimes that's an issue where uh, ergonomics comes to play, but the staff is accommodating to the broken equipment that they have to make use with during the course of the working day right. to their detriment as well. Like the seat pan is loose, so I have yeah. to sit askew in order to balance the seat pan in order to treat the patient. Or the assistants can't see because the dentist's back of their head is in the way. Yeah. Or, uh, you know. Or the so chair is just team. placed at a different level. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, I watch sometimes where I have to say to the patients, can you turn to your left so that my assistant isn't reaching so far or right. having to stand or do something different? Right. Again, asking the patient to accommodate. But sometimes as a dentist, you're going to have to accommodate too Absolutely. for your own assistant. Right. You know, it's a, it's a give and take, I guess. Is Absolutely. And, you know, we, we, we talked about one of the assistants asked me yesterday. She said, well, I, I really can't ask my boss that. And I'm like, well, shouldn't you have a working relationship? You know, there's no I in team. Right. You know, hey, doc, can I get a peek? Hey, doc, can I get a peek? And you know, they can take a look and see what they need to do, yeah. you know, or, or, and equipment for assistance, just thinking about it, you know, the old archaic belly bars, mm -hmm. you know, the new assistant programs are using saddle seats because then they could physically get closer, get higher, turn and move a whole lot easier and maintain a better posture. Because right. if that belly bar is there, typically they're hanging onto it oh, for dear for life sure. so they don't fall well, on top of somebody. Yeah. yeah. So we've talked yeah. about, in, in, in your world, in ergonomics, you talked about posture, you talk about musculoskeletal. Look, I'm throwing these words around. No, no, no. It's and okay. I'm going to speak way out of turn, but this no, no. has been my new thing is the breathing thing. So, like, I'm oh. going to talk about breath. Now, I'm going to throw something at you. I'm going to totally screw this up. All right. You guys watch baseball. Like, there's a science. Like, there's a reason a lot of the batters step out and they go... Mm -hmm. Like so, right before they go, and you'll see pitchers do that. It's very, very intentional. Can you tell us that? Why? Well, I, I don't know. He might. He's he's an old baseball <laughs> okay. player. So are you really? Yeah, a long time ago. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, you know, it's somebody who's just like refocus. Right. Right. Yeah. Just take a breath and go. Okay, let me get ready for what's coming next. Right. So I can think about it. Right. So you're not being rushed through it, and it's like it takes a moment to settle things down and get you prepared to do what you need to do next. Right. But we po we breathe poorly. Oh all day long, correct? Yes. We all do. All of us do. But if you add stress to the equation, then people accessory breathe. What so does that if mean? Accessory breathe means they're sh Shallow shrugging breathing. their shoulders and they're using their neck musculature in order to breathe when you should be using your diaphragm. Like yeah. all this stuff from your belly button up, you know, you, your diaphragm should be working when you breathe, but your shoulders shouldn't go anywhere near your neck and your chest shouldn't move. It should all be any, you know, if you're a singer, you sing from your diaphragm. If you talk right. to singers, they got it, you know. So if you put one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly, if you're breathing properly, you know, the hand on your chest shouldn't go anywhere, but your belly should move when you breathe right. in and breathe out. But if you watch people breathe, and it's funny because I'll, I'll have a group of people say, you know, show me your breathing. Do you, who does breathing here for relaxation? And you see people go... 
Yeah. Is it because like, we're is that like really relaxing? <laughs> is it because we carry it all? Absolutely, up here? absolutely. Like, you guys are like you. All of this is helping you to maintain the posture so your head doesn't fall any further forward or you fall off of the treatment you stool. Yeah. So you're not falling off. Do you breathe somebody. during the day like yeah, that? I mean, are you taking? I, I mean, I've tried to do that a little bit more, where I will just consciously take. Right, but a you have to deep, consciously, consciously yeah. to take a deep breath. Because the other part, you know, you were talking about refocus, but the other thing is a little more oxygen in you is good, yeah. and it relaxes you. Right. Right. So you're For not sure. going to be as stiff. So, you know, it, it, it's kind of like you can do it in between patients. You can do it when you can. You can. It's like I, you know, they talk about getting to a traffic light and tucking your stomach in for, you know, 10 or 20 seconds as just a way to do a little, you know, try and work on your gut. Some of this stuff is easy. You just have to know, you know, from these guys what to do and then be serious about instituting it yeah. and incorporating you it. Right. it into your day. Okay, this episode's not about me, but it's, we're okay. going to make it about me for a second. Okay, okay. please. <laughs> I'm Tell 50, us all your I'm, troubles. I'm 52. <laughs> do you, and I do, do you ever do this? You go, like, during the day. You make your neck snap. Yeah, and you actually, I'm I actually starting that. to enjoy the pop, yeah. and I'm noticing the pop's getting a little bit bigger. Yeah. And then I, now I can do it three times a day mm -hmm. instead of, is, that's not good, correct? You want to comment on that? <laughs> you know, because you, you know, there's more clicking and popping when you get older, right? Yeah, right? right. And that, that's just because the joints are not working like they want to. Okay. Right? So they're starting to break down a little bit and they're not functioning as normal. Right. But if, if it's a, not a painful pop, it's not a big deal. It's not. No. Okay. Right. So I mean, people pop like pop your knuckles. Like it's not a big deal to do that. Right. Right. You know, and some people feel like it's a little bit stress relief and things like that. It's just that the joint's not functioning properly. Right. And it might be a warning sign something's happening down the road at this point. Maybe you need to get it addressed. Yeah. If right. you're having some discomfort. Correct. If if when you're doing it, while you're doing it, after you're doing, it. if it's not a relief. Right. Yeah. But like, will I do that? And now my hand is numb. That's a you know, like that's a red flag. Right. right. You know. Yeah. So. We don't charge extra for popping. Yeah, uh, but you guys will do that, or no? Well, it's not what okay. we do. Right. Uh, but if it's a if it happens to happen when we're doing what we do, and yeah. we say there's no extra charge for that. Right. Yeah. I mean, our goal is to get people moving pain free, back to full function, right. and teach them homework. So that's one thing that we do a lot of. If someone comes in and their neck is raging and they have sciatica down to their foot, yeah, we give them homework <laughs> to take home so they could manage it on their own. If yeah. they're managing it fine on their own, we might see them maybe two visits in a row and then in a month later. Mm -hmm. But if they have an exacerbation or they, gosh, they wake up one day and their head is stuck over to the side, which occasionally happens if you yeah. sleep funny, right? I woke up and my neck's over here for three days. Yeah. We want to see them so they can call us up and make an appointment and we bring them in and we get them back to their norm. Yeah. That's so but we, And I think yeah, in ahead. our world, right, it, it's 70% can treat themselves, right? 30% we put hands on. Right, so more of it is just trying to teach you what you need to do because you know you can come to us three times a week and we do our stuff in the clinic and you feel better, but if you keep falling apart at home, you're never right. going to get better. So our goal is to teach you how to help posture, yourself. teach you the correct exercise, right? To treat yourself. Right. You know, start monitoring. I'm getting stiff. I need to do my exercise. I'm starting to have pain. I need to do my exercises. Yeah. So our focus is on getting you to take control of your, your I love symptoms. It. I yeah. love it. Right. I mean, that, so, that's where it's all at at this point is you become self treater. Yeah. Because right? if you want me to do it, it's, it, we're never going to get anywhere. Absolutely. You have to take responsibility and treat yourself. And that eliminates that codependent relationship. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And I could, you were talking about patient complaints and things. Right. So one, I can think of this lady who, you know, she had back pain with sciatica and she wanted to go back to play tennis. And this is a long time ago when we worked in the clinic in Oak Park together. Um, so we got her rid of her sciatica, got rid of her back pain. You know, she was p playing tennis and she came in one day with this piece of paper in her hand. And I said, hey, how you doing? She goes, oh, I'm great. You know, I'm doing my exercises. I'm playing tennis and everything. She goes, but I want to talk to you about this. And I'm like, what is it? It was our bill. And I said, is there something wrong? And she said, well, it's the bill. And I said, this is what we charge everybody. We didn't charge you more or less than anybody else. And did we not accomplish the goal of you getting back to doing what you wanted to do? Yeah, you, you did. You did. But you never touched me. We'd, I didn't have to lay hands on her to get her back to doing all those things. Right. And so I, I said, well, I'm really sorry, but this is what it cost, yeah. whether I touched you or not. But I learned something very, very early on then after that. And, and so now when someone comes to my clinic and no one can see us, but 
I put my hand on their shoulder when they come in and I go, <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> I and then we have no there problem with that ever again. But I'm like, you know, like you're saying, you're like, people have their different. Well, yeah, uh, we get that too. Know. If in dentistry, if you don't actually touch them, you just do the exam. Sometimes they go, but the doctor didn't do anything. Right. You know, because we're a treatment like you are in many cases, you, you know, the treatment is what you're paying for, not the knowledge to get you there. Right. But I got another question, yeah. which is, you know, uh, the prophylactic stuff, mm -hmm. the stuff like massage uh, consistently, uh, you know, whether you use one of those Theraguns or those Shiatsu massagers or those things. Yeah. What, what is that? What is their place in, in some of this? Yeah. Well, you, you could go first. Okay. Uh, I, I'm very opinionated, but I, I'll... Well, that's what we want to know. Hey, the right. network is not going to censor us. Theoretically, so in, in our world, right, after you get ready for prevention, we're discharging you, we'll teach you how to monitor your symptoms, we'll teach you how to monitor your range of motion, and perform the exercise that makes you better at that point, right? Typically, when we look at the massages, they always don't provide long-term relief. People come into us and say, oh, they feel better temporarily. And all you're doing is relaxing these muscles. But if you still have a problem there, Right? As soon as the brain recognizes, well, wait a minute, there's still an issue there. They're gonna tell that muscle spasm again to not move that joint. Right? So it's kind of like relaxing a little bit, but until you address the problem, it's never gonna get fixed. Yeah. Right. Right? So that's our goal is to fix that problem so you don't have to rely on other things to get you back to where you need to be. And sometimes it's just a matter of doing the simple exercises every couple of hours. Like one of the basic things we do is talk about a retraction for necks, right? Just walking through. So between patients, you're doing this, walking down the hallway, you're sitting in a patient, you're getting stiff and sore, you do a couple of those and go back in. It's sometimes a really basic thing that can get you through your day. Right, you know, right. But people tend to not do that. Right. Right. Now well, they're in pain again, and now we start the whole we wait cycle, the cycle again. all over right. again. Exactly. So, but just yeah. to add to that, I mean, we all love a nice massage. Sure. Right. So, but if I have ridiculous, my two fingers are numb in my hand, well, that's, or I yeah. have raging sciatica down my leg, that's probably not going to get rid of that. Now, once we get it where it's under control and manageable, and you want to go for a massage or you want to go for something else, that's perfectly fine. Right. And it's great if you can do it or get the gun out and, you know, it just relax my shoulders a little bit. That's fine. The, the issue that we see as clinicians is people will start with their trainer or someone who doesn't know how to care for medical conditions trying to manage that to their detriment right. where they make it worse like well i've been going to the personal trainer at the health club and you know they're not trained to do sciatica or some of them think they might be but they can make you worse mm -hmm. yeah. for sure so we caution folks that we see about that you know if you're having this sort of issue you know, come, why don't you come and see us? Yeah, I love it. You know. the, this is a great topic. There's a microphone over there. If any of you want to ask questions, we would love to entertain questions. And I got a bunch, but like, um, maybe we'll go back and forth and see. One of the questions I have is, I this is a very important topic. Oh, for sure. I think the dentist coming out now, there's a chance they'll be working longer than you did. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they're going to be living longer. They're going to be healthier. You know, they may go. I hope three, so. That's, yeah. that's the bad news. <laughs> well, that's a bad. I yeah, hope so. Thanks for the bad for sure. news. Oh, right. No, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I, I say I've got longevity in my family. Thank you. God. Do. Yeah. You do. I do. You know, and so I always tell everybody, you know, it's be nice to see you at your funerals because I'm going to outlive uh, all of yeah. you. <laughs> but you know, I can't live out ever outlive everybody. So yes, but you know, but, will their will their careers be longer? We don't know. We that don't know. Yeah. Because there's a certain part to it, like you're talking about. The human body can only be subjective so much. Now, there's some people, lucky, knock wood, me, who have not encountered most of these problems throughout my career. Right, However, right. I do know people who've had really bad problems throughout their career. Back pain, surgeries. This is a different situation, but that's the human condition. Right? Sure. Everyone's body reacts differently to the stresses put on it. Yeah. And we all have about the same parts, give or take. Yeah. <laughs> but everyone responds to the stress is put on that at different rates. And just like, you know, an example that you guys, you know, as dentists, are you a dentist? No, I'm not. You're not. Okay. I just as play a, one as a dentist, <laughs> right, exactly. It, but as a dentist, you know, like sometimes some of the procedures that are pretty benign, you know, the patients are flying out of the chair. And, you know, their response to that is like way overblown compared to how you think it should be. And, it, and it's the mm -hmm. same with people with back pain and neck pain where, you know, it shouldn't be a 10 out of a 10, you know, right. but it is for some people. And it's, that's how everyone responds. And, you know, mm -hmm. on the other side of that for dentistry, you know, if you guys beat yourself up all day for 10 hours, whatever it happens to be, and you don't go home and you don't rest enough at night, 
to recharge the batteries and let your body, you know, recover right. from the stresses you put on it. And you go back and do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again, four days in a row, five days in a row, and you're out of balance physically, you know, right. Right. bad things happen. Just, yeah. You know. And I guess my point in that was like taking care of your body early on. And some of these kids that we talk to, they're working five six days a week well, and like that there's only so much the body can take right. on top yeah, of it at they've that got the, age you should be you're, able you're to invincible do it. well right? you okay. think you're invincible yeah, well, right. and, and for the most part you should be you know I, I call that at that age at those ages and I was there at one point I was immortal right yeah. we all were you know mm-hmm. we all were no one thought they were going to get sick no one thought they were going to get hurt no one especially thought they were going to die right so that immortality allows you to do those things then you hit those what I call those incidents that happen in life where you realize you no longer can do physically what you used to do. And you're going right. to love this story, Kirk. So I, I tell this one. So when I was a kid, we lived in this you know, yard. My backyard had a fence around it, and we would play ball in it. And the yard was 60 feet, so we knew how low far the, the fence, you know, was. The fence right. was. And the ball would go over the fence, and I'd put my hand on top of that chain link fence, that, that rod, and I'd hot, throw my legs over it, and I'd go was never an impediment to me. It was no big deal. It was just there, all right? I'm now about 32, 33 years old, and my sister now owns this house, and we're there for a barbecue, and somebody throws the ball over the fence, and I run up to the fence, (laughs) and I look at it, and somebody (laughs) made that fence much higher (laughs) than it was through the rest of my life because it was no longer a simple issue for me to throw my legs over it. I was not physically able to do so. Yes, sir. So when we look at that stuff, yeah, there are things I'm going to be able to do when I'm younger, but now when I get older, uh, there's things I'm going to have to make accommodations for, and we just need to know that. You didn't finish the story, though. Did you you flip over? Did you jump? I climbed over it. I did (laughs) not throw my legs over it. I climbed over it. You were looking for the gate. Now, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) I don't... uh, Right now, yeah, I'd probably looking for the gate rather than try and hurt myself self going right. over the fence. Right. But those moments happen like when you have your first fall and you're like, oh my gosh, my back hurts for now more than a week. And you, in these moments, you're like, okay. I'm yeah. Well, the pain used to go away after 24 hours. Right. Oh, and sure. now it takes two days and two Advil or, or even, two days and three martinis or, or you oh, know, whatever yeah. it happens. Or even be. better. You know, you used to be able to take the weight off in a day or two, but just start slowing down your eating. Now, uh-uh. That ain't going to work that way. No, you got to figure work. it out again. Oh, so, yeah. you know, our bodies do change change as we age and we have to make those accommodations for that but you know the other thing we're seeing is a lot of students now coming to see us that are we've seen a bunch like dental students yeah yeah yeah. no the last two days we've seen a a good number of students and what are you hearing like what their shoulders their necks wow and just you know some of it is the equipment they're using in their you know their programs is Mm -hmm. it is what it is that's what they have to use but making them more mindful or you know the loops that they're using you know, they're all set in a, you know, in a office. They're not in their office. They're set in the exhibit hall or wherever they buy their loops, and the focal length isn't enough, and they're, they're dropping their heads to focus, you know, even though it's supposed to make things easier for them to see and visualize, right. well, you know. So. And you're talking about that. I just went through this today yeah. where we're measuring myself up or getting measured for a new set of loops, and they have all my measurements, so yeah. they know what they are. But the reality is, is I'm leaning in more, and I know I am. Why? Because my eyesight has changed, too. Well, that and too. we don't yeah. always change our loops because the magnification works, but the rest of it isn't. So I'm leaning in more. So, again, you have to always think about all these little pieces the of next the puzzle piece. yeah, the next that piece. may change exactly what we're doing, even though... No, you don't think anything changed. Right. No. That's re- the reality. Well, we're all still 20 in our heads, right? Uh, uh, right. Well, I, I don't know about that. Until you get to the fence. Until <laughs> yeah, you, you get, get to the, the fence. fence. You picture right. the face plant in your right. mind. But you know, I, no, I really shouldn't do this. Like right. the, like the, this is a very dynamic environment you guys are working with, to your point. Like, it's constantly moving. Right? Yes. You right. know? It's well, fluid. And the yeah. other thing we're seeing, right, is it's just not working in the office. Right? So you'd see your patients in this forward head position. Then what do you do? You're going to do your notes on the computer. Right. So you're sitting in that same position. Or you're texting right? on your phone. Right. Throughout. And you're texting on the phones. Then you oh, drive yeah. in your car. So you keep feeding into this position all day. And in the dental profession, it's even worse, right? Because you're just spending so much time being bent forward on these patients. Well, then you right? have you're the never lazy taking boy. A break. With right. Netflix oh, on yeah. the lazy boy. <laughs> exactly. And you go to bed with three pillows under your head. You know, oh, you're yeah. laying there in that same going, position. What the heck's going on? When do I get to relax? Well, that gets back to things like proper 
pillows and proper support. All of and that. Proper, all of that. Well, well, let's speak to that because, like, now we're talking about during the day at <clears throat> night. Yeah. Now, airway, breathing, oh, sleep. Yeah. That's a big conversation. Well, like, okay, CPAPs, there's grinding your teeth, there's TMJ, TMD. That's still mm-hmm. around. I yeah. mean, all of that. But then there's, okay, what about a mattress? You know, people ask us, all, what, what's the I best mean, mattress? We are, look, my wife and I, we're in the market. So, like, the, okay. you know, like, what, what do you tell people? So, get your iPod. Okay. Put on your comfy clothes, <laughs> take your comfy pillow, okay. and go to the back-to-bed store and tell them you're going to be there for a little while. <laughs> okay, And really? lay on their beds. It annoys the heck out of the sales guys. Right. And you need to find one that's comfortable there where you lay on it and you go, oh, I think this is the one. Okay. But make sure... It has a return policy. Yeah, they all usually <coughs> have some, especially the ones in the boxes now. Yeah. You know, they, they show up. They, they have they a one year. Yeah. Some of them have a one year. Well, yeah. But you want to make sure you can send it. Like, so yeah. my mom bought the only one for $800 a few years ago. Yeah. I'm like, went to her house, and she's got this brand new mattress. I'm like, Mom, what's, where'd you get this? Well, I went and got a new mattress. And I said, uh, you know, okay, why did you get this one? And she said, well, because the guy said this was the best, best one. one. Uh, okay, I'm like, but mom, you know, I know a little about this. I wish you would have called me because, you know, maybe yeah. I could have helped. Right. But okay, never- so she tried it for one week and went back to sleeping on the couch and had this $800, couldn't return it, Ooh. mattress that the guy told her was the best one on the planet. Wow. Uh, you know, like things that make you crazy yeah. <laughs> in your real life. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, mom. Yes. Anyway, yeah. so go to the store, try it and see what you can. I can tell you, though, bias-wise, I mean, the most comfortable mattress, and I don't get any kick from Weston, but the Heavenly Bed is unbelievable. I've had one of those. The Heavenly Bed is unbelievable, but they're really expensive. They're really (laughs) expensive. But you have to buy them straight from Weston, Well, there's a knockoff I I actually discovered at one of these places. They make them for the Heavenly people, and they're about half the price. That's the one I have now, because my wife made me get rid of my... Waterbed, and I. Oh, and I, I had one of those. I cried. I, I cried carrying it to the curb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like it's warm in the winter in Chicago. We've all had a waterbed. And it's cool. Bed. Well, and it's oh, yeah. cool in the summer. And you the know, question goes, is how long? Too much did you have a yeah, there's too much history. You should get rid of this bed. I'm like, but honey, we sleep really comfortably. Oh, <laughs> anyway, my gosh. that was a sad day in my life. That you know? is right. funny. Yeah. Stuff. yeah, except then there was no more leaks that you had to patch. Oh, and there was all the other all the other maladies that happened on your water. Yeah, the dog scratching. You know. Yeah, I mean. Those, yeah. those are things. I went through a number of those yes, water sir. beds. But, uh, you know, with all of that, you know, those beds, it's a personal thing. Mm-hmm. Too. It really I mean, is. Everybody. Yes. Yeah. And the, the good thing now is there's a lot more information on bedding than you could have ever have gotten. Right. What type of sleeper are you? I mean, 10 mm-hmm. years ago, I probably couldn't tell you that. Now I can tell you I'm a side sleeper. That, that you know, and which side do I favor? And, and then there's some bed or something that's catered to that. Right. right. And it's hard to change how people sleep. Right. I mean, one of our big challenges, if someone has really bad neck or shoulder pain, <clears throat> you don't want them laying on the side that bothers them because right. it makes it all worse. Or someone who has had a surgical, like a rotator cuff repair. Right. They, they're, they're right-handed, but they love laying on their right side. That's a big deal yeah. to, to get them to sleep at night. And so there's a couple things you could tweak for sleeping with towel rolls and blanket rolls and you know, tennis balls and other things. But it is very personable, and it's it's impossible to change. I mean, yeah, it really yes. is. I mean, you get those patients, you know, who are stomach sleepers. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's about the worst thing you can be doing for most of us. For most of us, I mean, as I say to my patients, you know, your head's at a ninety degree angle all night. There's yep. nothing you. There's nothing positive. But I like sleeping like that, yep. and, and they get through the night. Yeah, yeah. and we couldn't do it. Yeah, uh, but, but you know, I, God I'd bless probably them. be you know out of breath. Yeah, <laughs> suffocated. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And they understand when you explain it to them, but right. trying to break that habit? Well, right. I say, yeah. what I, we ask patients, like, what position do you sleep in? And they say, well, you know, I start out on my bed. I go, but where do, what position do you wake up in? Yeah. Right. And, and that's really more telling, because that's where right. they're going to end up being. I fell asleep on the couch, then well, I then stagger upstairs, <laughs> yeah, right. and then we're, I don't remember anything I after pass that. pass out on my stomach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. so funny, because I always start side, and then I'm always back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Always wake up. Then you're a back sleep. I right? am. That's it. it. Must be. That's it. Yeah. But yeah. Your, your side is your position of comfort where you can turn everything down right. enough so you can fall asleep. Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. Oh, yeah. So we only have a couple minutes left. I want people that are listening, we're, we're going to publish this on our podcast. How do I oh. find out more? Like, what do I do? Let's say I'm a dentist listening. I'm in pain. What do you guys do? 
How do I find well, out more in, about what you're doing? We live in Chicago area. Okay, but you have a company. You haven't even met. Well, <laughs> you, what uh, do you do? Well, I, I, my re- I work with kids with special needs. That's like my real job. Okay. And this is this is kind of what we do because we so really cool. love doing it. I did it. not know that. Um, you know, we could give the yeah please. email address. You can. This okay. Is, yeah. And and that's kind of how people get in touch with us. All right. And we do it that way. Let's you know, do we it. thought about doing all that incorporation stuff, and yeah. it's a lot of hurdle. For so where we are at this point. You guys just kind of treatment plan one-on-one type of thing? Yeah, it's one-on-one, exactly. on one and we've, we've been coming to, uh, you know, national meetings for the ADA for a number of years. You know, the Texas meeting, uh, Star of the North. I mean, showing up at the big regional meetings and doing, you know, variations of this conversation. That's mm-hmm. awesome. But so the what screenings we're doing at ADA, mm-hmm. and okay. you should come and check us I'm out. I'm going to do that. And you should come and check us out. And yeah. we're happy to give you the once-over because we're here till tomorrow doing okay. assessments. And uh, right. it's, got, it's, it's, it's just telling. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just sharing knowledge. So we're not selling anything. That's the other thing, you know. Um, so my email is Caruso, P-T, C-A-R-U-S-O, P is in Paul, T is in Tom. It's all lowercase, Caruso PT at Ameritech, A M E R I T E C H dot net. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank yeah. you guys for yes. being on. Yeah. Dave, you want to throw your email address in there or no? Yeah, that's fine. It's uh, D Plava, D P L E V A P T at SBC Global dot net. Awesome. Awesome. And our picture's in the post office, but that's all hearsay. So if you don't know, attention to any of that. I Nobody can through, prove I, it. I, that's right. That's right. I had to get Three matter. arrests, no convictions. We're all <laughs> you good. Don't have an ankle, you don't have an ankle bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> we got it off. No felonies, just a morning. couple of misdemeanors. Don't worry <laughs> that's about right, it. That's right. That's awesome. Any last thoughts to you? I think it's Give a great Give us the good topic. word on like how important this stuff is. I think it's hugely important, and it's hugely overlooked. That's really a big part of this, is that it's overlooked. Unless you're having an acute problem, yes. nobody pays attention to it and stopping the problem just like everything else in dentistry prevention is much better than the cure it's easier to keep the wheels on the wagon as you guys know and i'll just make your point of you know people listen better the more they hurt absolutely you have that just like we have absolutely share that i don't want to go through this again root canal (laughs) stiff neck uh, yeah yeah, exactly yeah i agree sure well thank thank you guys this has been great thank you for having us it's been so fun this this was very fun yeah Yeah. and marty thanks for jumping in thank you marty short term like uh that's what's so cool about you what are we doing just come here all right You're good with it. Start talking. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Thank you for having us. Hey, thank you guys for listening. Hope you guys enjoy it. And keep tuning in. we got some more good stuff on your way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.